All right, folks, I have to say, there are some things in the August update of Fusion 360 that are hands down time savers. This month, we're highlighting a couple of functionality changes and features that will impact every type of user of Fusion 360. From industrial designers to machinists and project managers, one, if not all of these new features will be a highlight or added value to your workflow. First, emboss. The new emboss feature lets you sketch a desired shape and with a click of a button, you can emboss or deboss onto or into a selected surface. To use it, simply draw a sketch of your desired shape. In the Create dropdown, select Emboss. Select the sketch you want to use, then the face you want it to interact with. And depending on your operation, you can emboss or deboss. Here, you can also adjust its position on the intended surface. Things like mold making, solid modeling, surfacing, whatever it is that you're creating, this new feature saves you time. This one goes out to all of our parameter users and is one you've been asking about for a long time. When creating dimensions on a sketch, you can change the default dimension's name while entering the value. Just enter the name you want for that dimension, add the equal sign, then your numerical value, and poof! It's updated in your parameters dialog box. This is a major time saver for anyone whose workflow has been back and forth from parameters to modeling. Edit in place made it possible for you to edit a reference component in place of the assembly that it lives in. Now you can create a reference component directly within the assembly you're working in and have that component saved automatically to the location you choose. The new component command now has two new options, external and internal components. Selecting internal creates a component like it's always been but selecting external will create a reference component within the active assembly and reveal a new location option. For anyone working on a team, this is a fantastic tool that lets you design concurrently with stakeholders and collaborators while also having the power to outsource, outshare, and isolate aspects of your project should the need arise. All right, this one's for all you T-spline lovers. We've released Edit by Curve. This feature gives you more control and fine tuning in T-spline modeling by using curve control points instead of dragging edges. The intention is to provide you with more control over the details so you can get precisely what you want for your project. This new feature gives you more options like degree values, distribution, as well as curve fit preferences. For anyone working in the T-spline's environment, this is going to be a major bonus. Not everything in the making process is modeling or CAM. There's a lot to it that involves information and the distribution of it. In our drawing space, we've got a couple new tools that make getting the right information across easier than ever. For those who are heavy in project management, drawing creation, or specifying roles, this one's for you. Now, when you go to assemble a drawing set, you can control the details of your section views by using our enhanced section view command. With this enhancement, you can control the depth of your sectional drawings with a couple mouse clicks. Once you've drawn your dividing line, select between full, slice, or distance. These options give you the tools to be specific when creating your drawings that need to be sent to internal or external groups. Another enhancement in the newest release of Fusion 360's drawings is ensuring documents meet your branding or information management standards. Let's be real. You spend a lot of time on your branding or organizational methods. You need it to be consistent. Our improved Insert Image from the Cloud tool lets you insert your branding to your title block by selecting the image file you've uploaded to your project. Being consistent with your drawings and data sets just got a lot easier. One last highlight for drawings is going to please some of our international colleagues. French and Italian are two recent additions to the drawings environment. Now, forgive my Oki dialect, but rejoui and relagrasi. All right, y'all, that's it for Fusion 360's August 2020 update. Be sure to check out the electronics and manufacturing updates for Fusion 360. Hello and welcome to the What's New in Fusion 360 for August 2020. 
Before we dive in, be sure to register for the Advanced Manufacturing Summit, happening August 25th through the 27th. It's free, online, and will feature sessions by industry professionals on additive manufacturing, injection molding, CAM, and more. Click the link in the description to learn more and register. In the last update, we added even depths of cut to profile roughing operations, and now we've added support for back cutting. For more information on the details of even depths of cut, check out the blog post linked in the description. We also added isolate to the context menu in the manufacturer workspace. This toggles the visibility of everything except the selected part. To view everything again, right click on the same component and select unisolate. For both WCS probing and probe geometry, when probing a vertical wall along X or Y, we've added the ability to adjust the position of the probed point by dragging the point at the tip of the arrow and sliding the point along the X or Y axis. Checking the Use Selection Point box uses the location that you clicked when selecting the face. Do note that the height of the probed point is still defined in the Heights tab. Finally, we have a few features coming into public preview. First up, template libraries add a new interface that allows you to filter, view, and edit your toolpath templates much like you can with tool libraries. Create and navigate library folders on the left, search, edit, copy, import, export, and delete templates using the commands in the middle section. Filter and view details about each template on the right. This should make navigating and managing your toolpath templates significantly easier. Check out the help documentation in the description for more details. Post with NC Programs updates and standardizes the post processing experience across Mac and Windows using the NC Programs window. There are a ton of benefits to using NC Programs over the old post processor dialog, including search, easy access to post properties, and a visual representation of toolpath reordering. If you're like me and use a Mac, this experience is way better than the Mac post dialog, with easy access to defining the output folder, the online library, and opening the configuration file. If you haven't started using NC programs, I highly recommend checking them out and letting us know your feedback, since this is the foundation for some exciting development as we build out a more robust post processor platform. Also coming to public preview is manufacturing model. Manufacturing models allow you to add or remove features from the design without affecting the original model that appears in the design workspace. The original model and the manufacturing model remain mutually exclusive. So if you need to remove chamfers or add work holding, it doesn't affect the original design. To edit the manufacturing model, double click or select edit from the context menu. This brings up tools to help you edit or modify the model to prepare it for manufacture including remove features for quick defeaturing or insert derive to bring in work holding models. To create another manufacturing model, you can duplicate an existing manufacturing model or create a new one from the original design. One important note is that while this public preview will eventually become a fully released feature for everyone using Fusion 360, it should not disrupt any existing workflows. The last feature coming to public preview is one inside of the manufacturing model Arrange. Arrange is available in the Modify menu while editing the manufacturing model, and it arranges all selected components within a given area. This might sound simple, but it's extremely powerful and flexible. Once you've selected components to arrange, you can either select a plane or sketch to arrange them on. If you select a plane, you'll enter the dimensions of the area to arrange the parts within. If you select a sketch, the parts will be arranged within the profile you select. So if I have a rectangle with a hole in it, the parts will stay within the rectangle but outside of the hole. Great for using up extra stock or avoiding an area. The arrangement also updates dynamically if you edit the parts themselves or the sketch they are arranged inside of. Note that you'll need both the manufacturing model and arrange previews enabled to access the arrange command. If you give it a try, please leave feedback at the link in the description. Also be sure to check out the help documentation also linked below. As always, be sure to check out the What's New in Design and Engineering video, as well as the What's New blog post, linked down below. See you next time.